takes on the sights and sounds of sunny Southern California, where tonight for the Virtual Auto Club Speedway, we say good evening, sim racing fans, and welcome to round number two of the 2020 EDASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. As always, we're happy that you're along for the virtual ride with us on the iRacing Sports Network. As always, Evan Pasoko, Tim Terry, Randy Janet, upstairs with you as we get set for round two of 20 in the 11th season of officially sanctioned EDASCAR iRacing competition. We just took a look back to the season opener at Daytona, Tim. There during our iRacing to pre-race show, would we mentioned, yes, only one one race has happened. The points are those results. Tonight could really be considered the start of the season. So it'll be really interesting to see how those new driver team combinations can figure it out as we go racing on the two-mile D-shaped oval, Randy. Yeah, and the weather that these guys are going to have to work with is fantastic. 83-degree track temp and 65 degrees Fahrenheit here at Fontana. It's been like this, I can tell you, living down in San Diego. The weather's been absolutely beautiful the last month or so. A little bit of rain, but uh, I think you know, this part of the country definitely needs it. And a westwardly wind of only about 9 to 10 miles an hour, just about strong enough it might be an issue, especially in the early goings when these tires are fresh and these guys are three or four wide, Evan. But besides that, this is absolutely gorgeous track temps and uh, conditions for these guys. And it'll just aesthetically be a different look as well, because last year, if you remember that thrilly to finish, we ended under the lights. So tonight, in that sunny conditions for an afternoon race, as we'll see how this thing plays out for a scheduled 100 laps. Let's take a look, though, that qualified as John to a close track side at our starting grid for tonight. And it will be Keegan Leahy with a very good opportunity to go back to back. He's on pole, 39-841. He'll bring us to the green flag along with Chris Sherburn on the front row. My pick for for tonight's race win, Ryan loses, starts third. Steve Sheehan there with him as well. Bobby Zelensky, Dick Ottinger round out through P6. Casey Kerwin with a great qualifying effort, going to lead off row number four. As uh, with the outside, it's John Gorlinski. They continue to uh, go down this list. Matt Busa, Garrett Lowe, Logan Clampett looking for a great run, and Justin Bolton went to victory lane with the Stuart Haas Xfinity team last weekend. Going to try to get another win here tonight. As we look down, Nathan Lyon and Bob Bryant, they're going to roll off from row seven with Michael Tawney and Graham Bolin on row number eight. Action Crowder and Zach Novak are going to round out the tail end of that next row card. And then you find yourself halfway home where things will be chaotic. The likes of Christian Schaller and Courtney Vincent back into the mix. Jimmy Mullis deep in the pack for Richmond Raceway Esports. You've also got then Brad Davies, Colin Keister for Junior Motorsports and Roush Fenway. And then you got some more names back here that are going to have to get up on the wheel and get to the front of the field. Yarrow T and Michael Guest, uh, Kane Cook, Michael Gorilla, Dylan Duvall starting deep in the field again, and Malik Ray has some work to do too. Yeah, as we look deeper and deeper here, Alex McCullum and Ray Alfala, Tim's pick, is going to have to do big, big work here. Uh, Jake Nichols and Brian Schoenberg back here, along with Phil Diaz, and the winner of this race last year, the nine of Eric Smith. Get those Moto Motorsports cars find themselves as well together at the back and then all the way back through row 20. Santiago Tires and Jeremy Allen going to sit row 20. That makes up your 40 car grid here tonight from the Auto Club Speedway. We mentioned it during the pre-race coverage. Tim, a track that's been on the calendar since 2014. This race has only ever seen one repeat winner. What's in store for us? I think we're going to see that trend continue, but there are four former winners in this race. Fuel windows 44 to 48 laps. Pit road speed 55 miles an hour. We're going 100 laps. This is the second consecutive year we've gone 100 laps. Used to be a 125 lap race. Last season was wild. Eric Smith went to victory lane. We'll see who can tame this Auto Club Speedway and punch their ticket into victory lane this evening. And of course, as the field rolls, drivers have been talking basically all week long. It feels like, although Daytona was just two weeks ago, Randy, that it was months ago with how much has happened in between now and then. A lot of these drivers have been talking about how much practice they've been putting in. Uh, a lot of them, more than a dozen hour, literally, I mean, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of laps to try to figure this thing in. But the common denominator, no matter how much or how little you practiced, is everybody says that you're going to want to buckle up for this one. 
yeah, last Tuesday night when the checkered flew at Daytona for a number of drivers is definitely when the warm-ups and the practicing started, and it's going to be uh, really interesting to see how that culminates here. Like you said, different track conditions, running in the daylight uh, compared to going into the night like we did last season, going to really change how this track works. And let's be real, everyone's looking forward to the first 10 or so laps of every run when these guys are stacked up on one another, when the tires are fresh, and the draft is so, so strong in these current gen cars. We went some nine weeks to start last season where all of the margin of victories were within one second. This was one of those highlight races, and we're happy that you're going to be a part of it for the 2020 iteration. This time by to turn four pace car to the safety of the pit lane, and the field is going to be in the hands of your race winner from last week at Daytona in Keegan Leahy. We get set as we say, let's go racing from Fontana. Round two underway, and it's the Denny Hamlin Racing Toyota on the gas through the gears to turn one. And a great start for Keegan Leahy as he drives it down into corner number one. Battle's going to be for second. Ryan Luz are going to go side by side with Chris Shearburn, the Latart Esports 36, hanging out on the outside. And here comes Bobby Zielinski, that inside line moving and moving early on this start as they go to the inside of Shearburn. He basically pushes down the back straight away. Look at Leahy. He makes that move all the way to the white line. He wants to protect that bottom into the corner. Took away all of his arc down into turn three. But it is going to pay off. There's a bobble for him. He is sideways. Three wide for second now. As Zelensky's in the middle. Look at the big run by Steve Sheehan. We are five wide at the end of lap one. And the 36 car backs out of it. This is going to get dicey with people struggling with the race cars. The 32 going to stick the bottom. We're still three wide as they roll into one. Luza eyes up the outside of the 32 at Keegan Lay off of turn two. This is where the drama was at the end of the race last year. And we're going to get off of it clean as Keegan continues to defend bottom. But Luza and Zelensky both have runs. As Zelensky was on the back of the 53, he tried to move to the middle. They were too wide for the race lead, nowhere for him to go. So he sits in from behind. Leahy leads both laps of this race. He'll hang on this time through as well. But Luza has made that transition from the bottom of the outside line. You see the Williams Esports Ford now in front as they race off to turn one. The rest of the field behind them getting somewhat acquainted two by two as Nick Ottinger takes over fourth. Yeah, drivers trying to feel out their race cars right now. Wild couple of first laps for those guys up front. You can see them fan out down the back straight away, two and three wide, but up in front, Keegan Leahy trying to hold on, but there goes Luza to the inside. Luza going to try to take the advantage. Bobby Zielinski trying to get a sniff of that on the inside too. That's the second time in a row you've seen the 32 Leahy get to the inside to try to protect it. That time, though, it did not work. And at lap number three, new race leader Ryan Luza goes to the point. Bobby Zelensky not going to roll over. And again, this package, this track, a combination. That means they can't just pass somebody and run away. You're on board with the Williams Esports entry of Luza. Look at the outside right here to turn two. There goes Zelensky. He's got the speed as they race off for the 14 degrees of Banky down the back straightaway and up back to turn three. That silver bullet as Lenski knows is in the lead entering turn three, but wasn't quite able to get clear off of turn four. We've seen several cars loose already, especially the ones leading the pack, maybe having these cars set up for running in the dirty air and across the stripe. The gap's going to be nearly nothing when they come to start finish, and Luther's going to lead that lap as well. They're still stacked up inside of our top five here, two by two, and Luther trying to defend the bottom, but Bobby is so good in the middle of one and two right now. Ford Chevy Toyota, one, two, three, at the start finish line. Look at the move to the very inside by Shearburn, who started second. And look at that shot down the back straight away. Looks like plate racing down the back. That is first through 40th, only separated by 3.3 seconds at the start finish line the last time through. It is going to be difficult, though, for cars to make some moves. Logan to clamp it up a few spots early, side by side for the lead once more. Zelensky just Seven one thousand short of getting his first bonus point of the afternoon. Luza stays in front down low. And you can see these drivers, Tim, they don't look all that concerned with getting up to the fence and really swinging it down into the corners. These drivers able to make it stick down there early on. Saw a couple of drivers. You're going to see Chris Shearburn go back to the inside here too. Kind of gets off of the corner, goes to the inside, tries to make that move. 
and really doesn't have the momentum to do so. We saw it at Logan Clampett the last time by as well. That inside line trying to make some moves. It gets back to single file up in front. Ryan Luz are going to lead this lap by with Bobby Zelensky close in behind. Keegan Leahy there as well. Familiar customers up near the front of the field as at 36 of Chris Shearburn tries to position himself to try to make a move. They go back to side-by-side -side racing as they enter corner number one. Look at Zelensky try to roll that outside line. He's been up there for the last four laps in a row or so. Every time he get right here at it too, he's got in front. But look at Luza pushing up and basically trying to squeeze him up against the fence. Give him as little room to work with as possible. The 32 Leahy, third in line, watching on as Sherburn tries to tuck it on him. But it is basically too wide throughout the field. These drivers put on a show in that Daytona opener. That race was three wide throughout only real incident came on that last lap that would have been caution free if I'm a gambling man I would not bet that tonight goes that same distance without a yellow but so far so good inside outside both working down at this end of the racetrack 53 Alusa unable to clear again for the top spot and you bring up a good point there Evan about this race likely probably not going that long uh, without seeing a caution of course here at uh, California even though the package is really really it really is built to this sort of racing here uh, you're going to see these tires fall off here over the next 10 or so laps, and we're probably going to see things single file out as Luza able to get clear of the 83. You're seeing some stacking up in the mid-pack here behind the 32 Leahy. This is the fight for third, fourth, fifth. He's lying up the outside of Logan Clampett, and down on the bottom, the 36 of Chris Hearburn. They're going to go three wide, so maybe they want to try to keep it three by three for nearly 100 laps, but I don't think they're going to be able to do that. As these cars and these tires start going away, you're going to start seeing ill-handling race cars, Evan, start to come out. We've already seen a couple people really really struggle well, notably that 32 is right on board with the 99 he started in 11th position right now, sits in position 5. It's the Valvoline Toyota for Burton Clearman Esports of Logan Clamp and right-hand side. That is exactly what he sees in real time. On the left-hand side, that's what he looks like while he's doing it. He's made that drive from 11th now up to 3rd, and he's on the back bumper of Ryan Luza, who leads this race still side-by-side -side with Bobby Zelensky. You can see and they get right down to that white line, but you don't want to get down onto that apron or that race car is going to snap loose and then as they race down the back straightaway they'll have some bumps to deal with down in turn three. Yeah, you see that laser focus there as Logan Clampett tries to take the lead. He's been working methodically on that inside line, Evan, trying to pick up a couple of positions as he moves forward towards the front of the field. He's got Chris Shearburn to the outside trying to give a little draft to Ryan, lose and push him further ahead. But I foresee Logan Clampett trying to take the lead here. He's a California boy, wants to win at his home racetrack and put Bert Burton Kligerman Esports to the front. And I don't think it's going to be long before we see that number 99 poke that nose out. He just needs an opportunity. He's kind of pinned down by Shearbird on the outside. So for the moment, he rides in line on the bottom. It's been a few times since we've seen Logan Clampett last at Victory Lane at Indianapolis in 2018. His other career win coming at New Hampshire back in 2016. So if you stick with the number of every two years, he is due for a trip in 2020. And here he comes on the inside. He'll force his way to the bottom of Luza. Talks on the bumper of Zelensky. Now he'll go to the apron. Three wide for the race lead at lap number 12. He'll get on his door, establish some positioning, and it's all him looking into turn one. California natives at the head of the field Logan Clampett in Orange County running down on the bottom side and Bobby Zlinski from Fregno running in the top line and the 99 big run look at Luza fighting with the 36 of Shearburn huge block coming from the 36 down the back straightaway as they go in towards three and four and Luza able to get up into that inside line that he was fighting to get to as they roll through we've seen the bottom side be strong here off of four through these first 12 laps and Logan Clampett's gonna lead a lap here as they come to the strike it's like a Pocono restart every single lap of the race. I think that's the best way to describe it. Look at the right-hand side of your screen. The battle for 14th on the back. It is two, three wide, absolutely everywhere. And the reason I think this one's so much more difficult to maintain this kind of racing than Daytona, Tim, is because when you're on the plate track, you enter the corner on the bottom, you are on the bottom, on entry, on center, on exit. But here, you do need to walk it down the hill a little bit. You do need to come up to the fence off of the corner. And when you're two, three wide, you miss 
misstep by a couple of feet this way or that way, somebody overjudges or misanticipates what you're doing, it is so easy to get in each other, and these cars are never dipping below, at least at this point in a run, 170 miles an hour, so it's not going to be really easy to get away with anything. You're racing the racetrack as much as you are the competition at a place like Auto Club Speedway compared to what we saw a couple of weeks ago with the Daytona International Speedway to kick off our season. So you're, you're really playing that game of chess, especially in the middle of the pack, trying to maneuver yourself towards the front like we saw with Logan Clampett to get himself towards the front. Look at this mess here in the middle of the pack. You see Ashton Crowder in there, uh, the teammate to Logan Clampett trying to make his way towards the front of the field. Jimmy Mullis trying to poke his way towards the front. You really have to be on pins and needles, especially early in this race. you got lots of laps to work around here. We're going to complete lap number 14 this time by. Still plenty of time to get yourself to the front of the field, but you don't want to get caught up in anybody else's mess in the middle of the pack. We've got to battle for the lead. Battle for the race lead on once more as you see the Nani Donna Logan clamp it this time to the outside. Chris Shearburn making the move on the bottom. Almost clear at a turn two. There's a great shot down the straightaway. He got him. Clamp it wasn't able to carry that speed through the quarter. So the 36 car clears for the moment. But again, there is no checking out. Only 15 laps in to a 100 lap contest in Fontana. Luza still right here in the banks as well. You've got Zelensky. You've got Kerwin at 25 of uh, Ottinger as well in the picture. How about the 18 of Graham Bolin? Started 16th position. You can see his Interstate Batteries Toyota now running 9th. That's the Joe Gibbs Racing Driver, new to 2020. Yeah, there's a number of people that have moved up. A couple we've already mentioned, Logan Clampett, of course, 11th and up to 2nd. And going back to the race lead, he's going to nose just ahead of that 36th Latard Esports car of Chris Shearburn. Like you said, Graham Bolin as well. A couple other movers, Jimmy Mullis as well, who currently sits in the 16th spot. That number 46, Coca-Cola car from Richmond Raceway Esports doing well, moving his way forward through the field. And a little bit of picture-in-picture -picture action here as well as he's buried in this mid-pack, which seems to be really difficult to start getting yourself through. And Mullis stuck with Richmond Raceway Esports to the offseason. It was joined by 2019 champion Zach Novak to create a dynamic two-car duo. His Coke Energy 46 has made some strides. You see the 66 car, Jarl Tien, just passed him up in front of him. Uh, but that is a lot of heavy traffic. You want to talk about a good analogy. Uh, Southern California traffic on the racetrack this afternoon, side by side, still throughout the field. Maybe a little bit of separation. We said that they were 3.3 seconds apart through the field, Tim, at lap two. We're up to 3.6. So they are separated, but ever so slightly. It's going to be awfully difficult to get any sort of space. And look at the dive now to the inside. Shearburn got pushed by Alusa. He's got a world of speed down into one and he'll rock it back to the race lead as the 99 now looks to the inside. He'll go for the crossover. That accordion comes back together off the corner. The 99 goes to the inside. Logan Clampett trying to pick up that lead again. Chris Shearburn on the outside. Now can Chris do the same thing and try to get to the inside and get that crossover move? He's going to get down to the inside and block the momentum of Bobby Zelensky, but he's not going to be able to get that run off the corner. It's going to be Logan Clampett leading almost three wide in behind as Nick Ottinger has a nose in the middle. And you could probably just take the ticker off of the screen, Randy, tell somebody we're fighting for the jacket of flag, and they'd believe you. You would think that this race coming down to the wire, we're not even halfway through our first fuel window of the afternoon. But the problem is, if you're not up on the wheel making moves, you're going backwards. Yeah, and all of the biggest names that have been in this series the last couple of years are moving their way forward. We've seen Logan Clampett be a huge name. See him pushing Chris Shearburn down the back straightaway. Bobby Zlinski has been a big name. The most popular driver from 2019, Casey Kerwin. He's just checked into the top five and is trying to get around Bobby Zlinski of Ryan Luza up here and as well as that number 21 of Garrett Lowe. He's moved up here. Nick Ottinger, Steve Sheehan, a lot of the most consistent drivers through 2018 and 19 are at the head of this field right now. And there's the onboard shot again with Clampett as he goes to the outside of Shearburn. They have a little bit of breathing room over third on the back. But again, that 36 car has been so good on the bottom. There's the crossover back to the inside. These two have flip-flopped like that several times in a row now as they battle for the race lead. We'll see how it plays out down in turn number three. For more information on how you can start your iRacing career, log on to iRacing.com.
Car. We'll tell you what, it's been a long ladder to the top for these drivers, but you can get uh, have a lot of fun on the service the second you sign yourself up. iRacing.com for more information. Here we are in the one again, and you can see that advantage that the top two had has kind of evaporated. Casey Kerwin back on the prowl in the Jordan brand number 23. Everybody kind of moves back in together as they battle for that lead position, but your top two have a little bit of an advantage down the back straightaway, albeit maybe a car length or so as they dive it down into corner number three. You saw it on the last uh, onboard that we saw with Logan Clamp, but new sponsor in that 36 this week with Letard Esports, NBC Track Pass, hopping on board. Great to see a new partner on that Letard Esports car, and I know it's on uh, Santiago Tierra's is number four on the hood as well, so welcome to them. They've done some great uh, coverage of uh, the new Smyrna Speed Weeks, uh, the ARCA Series, and now it looks like they're going to go to the lead and try to get back to the front of the field as they're battling with the 99 Logan Clamp at Shiburn to the inside. And we're on board with Shearburn, so you can't see it now, but I'll tell you what, the best way to get that ad space that your buddy is worth, put it on the back bumper, be the first car up in the field. Logan Clampett has had a view of the back of the 36 a few times tonight. This time, it's flipped around because Clampett does clear off into three, and now we do have a little bit of a breakaway with your top five cars. It's Clampett. Shearburn, Kerwin, Zelensky, and Luza single file in each other's wake. That's because there's a two-way duo kind of holding everybody P6 on the back, and that's Garrett Lowe funding with the number one machine of Steve Sheehan. That battle has a couple of cars stuck behind us. Now we go for the race lead again. And you mentioned this breakaway, Evan, and it's not just up here amongst your race leaders. It's the entire field. For the first 15, 18 laps, we were seeing that three wide, four wide in a couple moments, even five wide coming to the end of your opening lap. These tires are starting to go away on these race cars. Most of these drivers, the early phases of the run, lap five, lap six for most guys is around their quickest lap. We're seeing laps in the 40.2, 40.3 window. These guys are dropping off. 40.9, last trip around the racetrack for Logan Clampett. He'll come across the timing beam this time through, and he's going to drop into the 41s. So tires are starting to go away and I think that's why you're starting to see this whole field single file out. And it's obviously going to play out differently. A new tire bottle, obviously a big part of it. But of course, we mentioned daytime race this year versus that nighttime race last year. Some cooler track temps in that one, uh, meaning that this time around, uh, maybe that tire fall off is going to be more amplified uh, than what drivers had experienced. And that's where those thousands of laps and hundreds, uh, you know, dozens and maybe even hundreds of hours of testing, maybe team wide, certainly hundreds, comes into play when you talk about the two weeks off that these drivers have in between races on the calendar so even if those third fourth fifth cars in line want to just ride single file a little bit nobody has passed that memo up the chain of command to Sherburn and Clampett who's still in first and second ride side by side all 40 cars who started this race still in it you're on the board with the driver out of Matthews North Carolina Casey Kerwin the Denny Hamlin racing car teammate to our waste winner from last week at Keegan Leahy he is now in third position on the racetrack and as I mentioned Leahy I look back to him. He's three wide at the tail end of the top ten. So tons of stuff going on as now we're starting to see some of those mid-pack cars make moves. Logan DeClampett, he started 11th. He runs second. We mentioned the Garrett Lowe and Graham Bolin. Those cars started in 10th and 16th. They're up to 8th and 9th now. So these drivers are starting now with some separation to be able to make some moves forward. We talked about Logan Clampett getting the lead by the leaders swapping that first position back and forth we're seeing Casey Kerwin being able to get up here and have a piece of this lead because Chris Shearburn and Logan Clampett are going back and forth there goes Casey Kerwin to the inside sticks that nose three wide to the inside they'll go for the top spot down into corner number three this is going to accordion everybody else back together but we'll see if Casey Kerwin can get that run on the inside and here we go one more to the inside four wide down the front here comes Luza. Lose all the way to the apron. Shearburn again, way up top's gonna tuck and lie to behind Clampett. And Lose needs to get up the hill to get some sort of an arc down and into the corner. He does so. Lose the bottom, but it is gonna be the middle for Casey Kerwin, who squeezes between the 53 and the 99 at Clampett to stay in front for the time being. You're on board with Graham Bolin. He's got the best seat in the house, I think, in his Gibbs Toyota. Three wide now for fourth on back. Shearburn got tight in nearly pushed up into Leahy. Just one mistake and the 36 of Shearburn fall, falls like a stone. Was fighting for the race lead a lap ago. Now he finds himself just on the outside of the top five as 
Casey Kerwin leads that lap by one hundredth of a second. Going to try to run the bottom here on the 99 of Logan Clampett, but we've seen that middle line be so, so good coming off a of turn two, and the 99 is going to have the advantage coming down the back straightaway. Going to have nearly a full car length lead. Won't quite get clear, but Kerwin is going to definitely fight for it up the inside, which is this has been the strong end of the racetrack for this low line down along the bottom, but Casey doesn't quite hook it up. The 99 has maybe a chance to get clear here, but no, Casey able to settle there in the middle line as we got a second Danny Hamlin racing car trying to check in. It's the teammate to the bottom, pole sitter Keegan Leahy will dive to the inside of Kerwin and will dance three wide for the race lead once more. No late move by Luza. He sits back and forth and watches it all unfold. Look at that slide there in the middle line for that 23 at Kerwin. That 99 at Clampett did an okay job on the high side in four. He's actually been a lot better at that end of the racetrack than he was on the outside right back there in turn two. He's not able to quite make that spot stick. And and that's why he ends up back in line. And you talk about some of the new teams to the series. Denny Hamlet, I'm sure real happy that his driver got the first win of the campaign. But I'm sure he's really liking seeing those cars 1-2 as we put 29 laps behind us from Auto Club Speedway. It is still Luza pushing the 32 on the bottom. And an Audi 9 at Clampett pushing the 23 on the outside. Small separation. It'll be rinse, wash, repeat. And we'll battle, I think, once more uh, for the race lead. But we are now past the halfway point in this first fuel run. 30 laps going to be complete this time by of 100 in this Fontana 200. And as the team cars go at it, you think they take it easy on each other. You think they would, but right now they're going out and trying to win this race and trying to position themselves for a good stint into pit road. As you mentioned, just a few laps away from seeing these drivers back on pit road. They're going to have to make two stops at this point, around 44 to 48 laps. If they can extend it to 50, I don't think they're going to get there. They might have to make two stops if this thing goes green. Evan Cummers and goers in this one. Justin Bolton has re-entered the top 10. He's up to position number six as he works down the back straightaway behind these Denny Hamlin racing cars. And even for the down the field, Tim, and oh, you'll like this one. Your pick, Ralph Alla, started 32nd. He's up to 13th at lap number 31. We'll continue to watch the battle as it ranges on from Fontana, but so far clean and green in round two. Pit stop shortly on the horizon. This just in, is Jonah Hill going to flake out on Martin Scorsese? The world wants to know. Come on, Jonah, come on. Cup Series. I am NASCAR. Hey NASCAR fans, this is Jonathan Merriman and your race day just got more exciting. NASCAR Finish Line is completely free to play and gives you the chance to win a $50,000 jackpot each race. For the first six questions you'll be shown a group of six drivers. Pick which driver from the group you think will have the best finish in the race. Each correct pick is worth 50 points. For the final question, you pick who will win the race. Correctly predict the winner of the race, and you'll get 200 points. You can track your picks in the live tracking section. The leaderboard updates in real time, so you always know where you stand. If you get all seven questions correct and finish with a score of 500 points, you win or share the $50,000 jackpot. Didn't get a perfect score? No worries. We're giving out $1,500 worth of guaranteed prizes to the top finishers in each contest. Start your engines and make your picks now. Well, Keegan Leahy stays out at the front of the field. He's all on his own off into turn number three because that is pit stops. First cycle underway right at the one-third mark here in Fontana. And, Tim, we took a look at the start of the night. That maximum fuel window, 48 laps, was not going to cut it on a one-stopper. So if you're going for two, might as well make the math easy. So lap 33, drivers were in. You can see them now blending back out onto the racetrack down low. These drivers looking to to go two to go to the distance. 
Ryan loses Steve Sheehan among those coming down into pit road on that last lap by Evan, but you mentioned it. I don't see anybody pushing it towards 50. You might see somebody at the back that might be trying to get some track position, maybe stay out and try to catch a caution flag, but for the most part, these guys, I think, are going to pit around the same time. Their hands are kind of being forced right now in the 32 of Keegan Leahy will come up at a corner number four and decide to come down onto pit road on this lap. So hands are kind of being forced right now as a bunch more heading down towards the the attention of the crews. I found it interesting that he did not come down to the pit lane the first time through, but his teammate Casey Kerwin did. So Casey came down to the pit lane. Those were one of the two team duos that were out there on the racetrack together. Uh, but you can see Leahy in for service. Bowling there behind him. Uh, less of a pack dive to pit road than what we saw in that Daytona season opener. So the next thing you know, we look back up, cycle back on the racetrack, and, well, the Donnie not a little good clamp. It's in a pretty good spot. You see the two machine there of Ray Alfala as well. Well, all of these cars right now still awaiting the trip down to Pit Road. Alfala does not bite, but we do see Nick Ottinger in a little bit further behind. Expect all of this to wrap up in about the next five laps or so, Randy. Yeah, that 99 of Clampett has already been on to and off of Pit Road. Ray Alfala right now is the uh, first car leading that has not come down Pit Road. And the reason drivers are doing this is that there's about a five-lap window from about lap 25, 26, up to about lap 30, 31, 32, where it seemed like everyone just lost two to three tenths of a second in lap time. So that's why we're seeing the pit stops about 10 or so laps earlier than, you know, what we may have been expecting if they were going to maximize the fuel run. But now we're going to see what Ray can do. Ray has historically been someone who likes to run his fuel pretty much nearly dry and really push the tires as long as he can. You see that number one down there at the bottom nearly getting into the back room. There's three wide, all cars on new tires, excuse me, trying to cycle by Ray. Yeah, that two car up top looks so slow because he's got the old tires. Everybody else that just passed him has already gotten service. Ray Alfala holds a 1.7 second lead over his teammate from last year, Chris Overland. The ride spin forward for the Wood Brothers runs in second position. Then you've got the likes of Gorlinski and Nichols, but a lot of these cars who have yet to come down to the pit lane have kind of been swallowed up by the larger groups of cars who have pitted and gotten back out onto the racetrack. It's almost exactly a lap's worth of time, Tim, that you give up by coming down pit road. And some of these drivers, as you mentioned, on those different strategies, trying to maybe try something. These drivers have been here to Auto Club before and have been to racetracks like Michigan, as you mentioned, on the pre-race show, Evan. So some differing strategies being played out here. But for the most part, we usually see a lot of them come back together near the end of the race. But we're closing in on that lap 40 mark of this race at the Auto Club Speedway. And we're seeing some of those drivers make those different calls, make those different strategies. But right now, Ray Alfala, he knows how to win here at Auto Club. He's done it before up in front of that VRS car. And we'll see just how long he's going to push it because he could, in theory, try to get a little bit of lap saved out of it as he almost had a close call with the five machine to go into the middle. That was Matt Busa. Again, fresh tires, not for position. The top nine cars, top ten cars still have yet to come down to the pit lane. Logan Clampett is the de facto race leader. He runs 11th right now. He pitted from about the race lead. I think he was second at the time because Leahy was out in front of him. So 11th on the back has already pitted. The top 10 still need to come down. And you would think if you stray this far, is it possible to push to lap 50, go for a one-stopper? I think if you waited this long, I think you're pretty much looking at uh, potentially coming all the way down and maybe trying to stretch this into a one-stopper. I mean, you're only two laps off, and we know that if you're in the draft, Evan, you can have huge, huge fuel savings. You think about what we saw at Indianapolis last year, what was an absolutely fantastic finish. The reason those cars that were as strong at the end of the race as they were at the end of the race was because they were in the mid-pack. They had big slipstream, and they were able to save immense amounts of fuel. If you're running in the mid-pack here, I don't doubt that you could maybe save two, maybe three laps on a tank of fuel and maybe make a strategy call if you think this race might go green. My only thing is that if you're dependent on the slipstream, Evan, even if you can make it to lap 50, you then need to have that slipstream through the next 50 laps as well. So, yeah, you might be able to make it to the halfway point through the first half, but how are you going to be able to get there through the second? 
You can see for the race lead, battle continuing on again. This right now is for technically 10th, but it is the net race lead. So this is where the race leader will come from once everybody else has cycled down to the pit lane. So Ray Alfala, current race leader, right-hand side of your screen, the net race lead, which is the battle for 10th position. So Leahy, again, not pitted with these cars, didn't really cost him much. He cycles right back into the mix. He sits between the 99. And how about the 17 machine? of Colin Keister. You want to talk about a sleeper who snuck in. He pitted at lap 34. Tim, we hadn't talked too much about him, but he finds himself now right in the thick of things in his fast at all forward. He was knocking on the door of the top 10 prior to green flag pit stops. We hadn't talked a whole lot about him, as you mentioned, but now he's inserted himself into this battle for the lead. Christian Chalner has made up some time as well in the 37 car. He's up here battling in this pack. Had just broken into the top 10 before those green flag pit stops began. So he's up here battling too. There's a lot of drivers that are really starting to flex their muscle and get themselves a little bit closer towards the front of the field as we work towards the halfway point in this race and Ray Alfala continues to lead this thing but here your battle for the net lead continues to intensify Bobby Zelensky is in this pack as well was running up front a little bit earlier too I, I can't wait to see how this all works out with the pit stops and you'll see when the timing and scoring at the top of your screen cycles through, the 11 cars that have yet to pit are Ray Alfala, Jake Nichols, John Gorlinski, Chris Overland, Phil Diaz, Santiago Tires, Blake Reynolds, Michael Gorilla, and Nathan Lyon. Those are the nine cars that have yet to come down to the pit lane, presumably trying to stretch to make it a one-stop race. And if that is the plan, if they can execute it, you want to talk about a headache, you're basically going to be having two different races going on at the same time. But if the majority of the field is going for the two-stopper, does... Does that make me feel any better or worse, Randy? Do I feel better that I might have figured something out? Or am I nervous because you don't have as many people agreeing with you that your decision is going to be the race winning call? There's definitely at least one person who's 100% thinking he can stretch this. And it's the fifth place running car right now of Phil Diaz. Last lap going into turn one, he was not only off the throttle, he was clutching that car into the entry of the corner, letting the revs drop all the way down. So there's definitely a fuel call coming from at least a couple of these guys. And I'd say at that point, it's nearly all of them who are thinking they can make it to the halfway point on a single tank of fuel. So it's going to be really interesting to see if they're able to manage this. But like I said, it's not just this first half you, uh, you need to manage it's the second half as well as Leahy is trying to size up the 99 of Clampett and just to finish that note there uh, with uh, you know Diaz clutching the car into the corner his lap was still two tenths of a second faster than that of Ray Alfala who is your current race leader still watching this battle for again what will become the race lead and I guess if you block that other strategy completely out of your mind as loses throwing blocks down the back straight away preventing the bullet from getting to his inside in uh, what is about third or fourth in line in this group these cars really don't care about those that are staying out they're going at it Leahy trying to go to the inside he gets blocked he'll go up top side by side as you see Luza, you've got keister bolin zelensky challenger all these cars with steve sheehan also not that far out of the picture Evan, strategy-wise, you hit the nail on the head. You have to own your decision right now. You made your bed. You have to sleep in it now, regardless what side of the strategy you're on, whether you're one of the top nine that has stayed out on the racetrack or you're in this mess right here battling for what would be the net lead. You really have to commit and own to your decision, and it looks like these drivers are doing so, and they don't care about the other nine that have stayed out on the racetrack. They're battling for this, what would be the net lead position as Keegan Leahy and that 99 of Logan Clampett continue to fight tooth and nail for for that spot is uh, Ray Alfala still on the racetrack. We expect him in around that halfway point if he can stretch it because he's going to complete 47 right here. So he's got to get at least three more laps in if he wants to hit his number in. We say the net race lead. I know it's all circumstantial to the end of the race, but those cars are going to pit, and when they do, these cars will become the leader. The question is, if those other cars can make that one-stop strategy work, how far will this group end up behind them when they eventually make their second and final stop? And then, of course, would they be able to catch them and make up that time lost? All of this is assuming that this race stays green through the distance. Drivers warn that it may be a crazy one, but right now the craziness is coming from the strategy. The on-track stuff has been great from the get-go. Left-hand side, the battle for the net race lead, and the right-hand side, you're watching the battle for 19th. 
Yeah, see, there's fights up and down the racetrack right now. Let's do a quick roll call of the drivers who are doing this long fuel uh, run strategy. It's Ray Alfala, Jake Nichols, John Gorlinski, Chris Overland, Phil Diaz, Santiago Tires, Nathan Lyon, uh, Michael Gariglia, and Blake Reynolds. Those are the nine cars who are trying it right now. Nathan Lyon was just all the way off the throttle entering turn one. So nine drivers here, Evan, are who we have to keep our eye on, not only here in the next coming lap for Pit Road to get busy for them, but... How late do they come down? If you can, I think maybe you try to stretch this. Lap 51, lap 52, as Ray is in on lap 49, and I think Nichols is following him in. Ray Alfala comes into the pit lane. Jake Nichols is not going to, but Gorlinski does. It looks like Phil Diaz is in. So a 50-50 split on if you could make it or not. And Alfala goes too deep in the box. The two cars got to back it up and reposition. That is going to cost him some time. He is down pit road. I'm more concerned about not being able to make it halfway than I am about that slide through the pit box. Four cars came down pit road. Now you're going to see everybody else who stayed out to head on in there is jake nichols in the 24 the motor motor sports entry he's your race leader he has done half the laps he is pitting chris overland down pit road as well expect to see tiraz in here is lion Gariglia, reynolds and gorlinski that cycles through all the one-stop cars they made it halfway so if they could replicate that run they could go the distance and as they come out of corner number four, your leaders will come across and officially count halfway home right here. 50 down, 50 to go from the Auto Club Speedway. So we're halfway through this race right now, Evan. We've got two different pit strategies going on. We haven't had a race here at Auto Club before that has gone caution-free. So you would expect something to happen in the second half of this race. I'm excited. Grab your popcorn. This one's going to be good. But I promise you, we're not going to now that, that you brought it up. I think that's going to be the curse. We'll see how it plays out. Here's the race down the back straightaway. You can take the net out of it. It is the battle for the race lead in Fontana. They're going to get it when they cycle back around these cars. And it is that 32 of Leahy back on top, followed by Clampett. Followed by Luza, quite a trio. Up at the front, Graham Bolin is the all-green number Toyota. The number one machine of Steve Sheehan is there as well. So all of these cars battling for the lead. Here's the replay with Ray Alvala sliding through the box. He locked it up. Pit road speed here at Fontana, 55 miles an hour. And that cost him about a second and a half of time. So he's going to probably be behind all of the other cars that were on the same strategy as him. He had about a second advantage. You can kiss that goodbye. Yeah, he's about in the same mix of cars, really. He's come out with the likes of John Gorlinski, who was another one of the cars who came down pit road uh, at the halfway point. He's also still ahead of Phil Diaz. He actually executed pretty well. Jake Nichols is behind Ray Alfala also. So Ray, despite that mistake, did uh, manage to keep his track position decently well as we still have this huge 9-10 car pack at the head of the field that's trying to figure it out amongst themselves. But... No one being overly aggressive here at the moment, knowing that they have a lot of laps to go, and actually they're going to be coming up on their pit window here pretty soon. Past the halfway point as we start to count down the laps now. This portion of tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of eNASCAR. Still looking for our first caution flag of 2020. Clean and green through Daytona. Big rack on the last lap. Doesn't count towards the stats. And so far, so good. Here tonight in Southern California. Keegan Leahy is your race leader. He won last week at Daytona. Logan Clamp, it's been one of the best cars tonight. He's hot on his heels in second. But we are in the midst of a two-stop strategy race. Those cars who are on the one-stop call are 32nd position and back. Gorlinski is the lead. Cardo Spinner! The 18 car just got tagged. Bolin is down and into the grass and none of it matters. First caution flag of the afternoon. That first caution flag flies at a very critical time. It's lap 54. These guys can come down and make the rest of the race if it does go green. But the 18 of Graham Bolin, the one that pops the cork per se on that stat you mentioned, Evan. First caution flag of the season. And they were battling hard for a top five spot to get there. 
They were, and it was single file down the back straightaway until I believe Christian Jolliner tried to look to the inside. The 18 machine was there. There was a little bit of contact. Next thing you know, he gets hooked, and it was very quick on the caution flag. We've seen many of incidents similar to that, Randy. Get away without having one, but that yellow came out right away. First yellow of the night, and now it doesn't matter how viable that one-stop strategy was. You've got cars who made that decision, like a John Gorlinski, who started in eighth position. You are now a low 30s car in the running order because, as Tim mentioned, we'll probably see pit stops right here to go the distance, and all of that was for nothing. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a shame, to be honest. I think we were all really hoping that uh, we'd see this great strategy at least play out, at least get to lap 80, lap 90 before something like that happens. But, you know, unfortunately, that was you know that was the risk, those guys going for the one-stop. I mean, both both strategies, this two-stoppers, of course, you come down early. If you have anyone that's out there, they're going to benefit if there's a, a yellow, and we're going to get a replay of this incident when you're going to see it's just a bit of a, almost a, a rookie mistake here, I think, Evan, with the 18 trying to clear himself or maybe even Challenger trying to clear it himself moving up and the 18 just gets pit maneuvered. Yeah, such a razor thin margin uh, as that 18 machine did have Challenger looking to the inside and it, I didn't notice anybody really go up all the way or go down all the way but that slightest bit of contact took him around and I mean he didn't do a good job of saving it. That car damaged just from the actual contact but that is what slows us down. Everybody on pit road get your four tires, get your fuel because you want to run the distance. The race off of the pit lane is going to be close. Logan clamp it. Will rock it. He'll He'll be the first car off of pit road for the cars with fresh tires. He is able to edge out Leahy, so did Chowner. But how about this, Tim? The cars who did the one stop, they decide to stay out. Well, they've got fresh tires about five or six laps ago, so it's not a bad strategy. So we'll take keep an eye on the 97 of John Gorlinski, the 16 uh, out there as well of Chris Overland. Uh, Chris Overland's due for a really good run here to try to pick up maybe his first win in the series. Keep an eye on him and the Wood Brothers uh, number 16, the ride spin car as you see a few more out here as we're uh, uh, continuing to work caution number one. It'll be an all new running order when we get set to go back green, but for the moment it is the number 97 in control. Will the strategy play out in the end, Skorlinski on top as we're past halfway home and under the caution flag from Fontana. Look at his stake, they're claiming the tour. It's going to be a one on one duel for the win down to the last lap. That was an incredibly dominant run. I tell you what, Dave, that car is hooked up. You can see it turn the center. Head to victory lane. Yeah. Oh. oh, I'd wreck my grandma to win championship for sure. <laughs> back live from Fontana the top seven cars have opted to stay out so that'll be the one stoppers on a little bit older tires fresh rubber for everybody from Logan Clampett and P8 on back as we get set for restart with 43 laps to go at Auto Club Speedway pace car down it in is this now going to be chaos to the end green flag back in the air they're all chasing Gorlinski to turn one you remember what we saw in the initial start of this race, Evan, complete pandemonium as they broke out three, four, and five wide. I think we're getting ready to see it once again, but it's all behind John Gorlinski as they exit corner number two this time, top three or top four, single file as they now fan out down the back straightaway. 
And there is no more bonding your time to get to the end. Everybody going to be able to make it on a fuel to the end of this race. So it's all about getting yourself to the front ASAP. And look at Nichols. He had a whale of a push from Chris Overland. He'll go to the race lead. There's a lot of contact. Gorillas into the outside wall. He comes down into clip it. And it is a big mess at a turn four. Caution for the second time. We went, what, something like 370 miles without a yellow, and we just stacked up two of them basically in the span of about 10 miles. That, that one starting with Gorilla, and then pretty much just him at, you know, losing control of that car, spinning down in front of the field. But that's a big, big incident there. You already see the 99 down on pit road. That's a huge disappointment for Logan. And there was really two possible incidents there, and that's why I set off for the restart, Tim. Is this going to be what kicks off for the chaos? Because these drivers said this race could get out of control. It had been relatively tame, and tame no more. There were two pieces of contact. Clampett actually got hit by Leahy, and then it was Gorilla who got loose on his own, then tapped by the three of Blake Reynolds. He got up into the ball, came down. We'll get a second look in just a moment, but either way, somebody was not making it out of turn four. Four, Gorilla the first to go all the way around. Yeah, there were a couple of cars sideways and loose around where Logan Clampett was, and it almost looked like everybody was trying to fumble the ball. Somebody was trying to catch it, and at the end of the day, they caught it, and it ended up being Logan Clampett uh, going through and getting the worst of that one, especially after running up front and leading so many laps early in this one. Heartbreak, but if you're going to have your heartbreak, I guess you're going to have to have it early in the season, Evan. It just so happens, though, that this is Logan Clampett's home racetrack, and I'm sure it's going to sting for a little bit. Other notable drivers, Steve Sheehan was involved in that one. He was up towards the front of the field earlier. So was Ryan Luza involved in that incident. He was one of the top running cars basically from the get-go. So not only did we shuffle up the running order with the cars with a one-stop strategy getting to the front, but now with a big incident, it's anybody's best guess how you've gotten to where you run. In the blink of an eye, your 33rd position to car on the grid, Jake Nichols is leading. Chris Overland who started 37th is now third and then Santiago Tires who started 39th is a top five runner yeah and Brandon could tell 38th all the way up to ninth as well John Gorlinski from William Byron Esports he's really the only uh, one of those drivers uh, that did that one-stop strategy that ended up uh, you know working out and that really sits here uh, that started inside of the top 10 so everyone else doing everything they can trying to work their way forward as we have a couple looks at the incidents that we had here that brought out this caution and you'll see the contact. It'll start up at the front, but it's the 50 degree. And there's a little bobble there on his own. Then there's the tap. And then that car ends up into the outside wall. Not able to hold it down. And unfortunately, nowhere to go for Logan to clamp it. Big issue. Zelensky barely avoids that one. That was Luzo with the back end of the car up and in the air. He almost goes over. And again, most of the cars involved in this one just had nowhere to go. And that's why it happened. Here's now that second look a little bit deeper. Clampett's getting loosened up by Leahy right there, all on his own to begin with. They saved that near wreck just to get caught up in the trouble in front of them. Yeah, that first little incident there in a corner number four probably should have been a wreck, but they saved it, and then it just so happened that the wreck ended up being right in front of them. So wrong place, wrong time, but great piece of driving by Logan Clampett and Keegan Leahy, those guys back there trying to save the first incident, which ended up being a part of of the grand scheme of things as the pace car lights are off and we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing was going to say a little bit earlier we mentioned the trends off the top of the show cleanest race that we had here at auto club prior to tonight was two caution flags back in 2018 we've matched that so far we're hoping to uh, stay under that average of five i think these guys can get some green flag laps and get some of those jitters out of the way get a clean start and log some laps i think we're going to see some green flag racing here yeah, it's not like the cars off at the very get-go when we dropped the uh, initial green flag of the night weren't going at it. I mean, that was aggressive racing. So there is nothing to say that we can't get through that, you know, 10 or 15 lap chaotic window off of a restart and race it out to the end. The problem is every time you take four laps out of it by pacing around the racetrack, drivers feel like they need to kind of overcompensate that much more. They could, hey, I've got less time. This restart will now come up. We'll put 61 laps behind us and take a restart with 39 laps. 
laps to go from Auto Club Speedway. It'll be Nichols and Gorlinski on the front row with Overland, Lion, and Tires to round out. The top five in the running order. The 24 gets to control for the base car dives down to the exit of the race start box. He'll go early. Green flag. And those three cars down low. Right now coordinated. Great run to turn one. These cars are all tired, struggling the six. Uh, nearly got around, excuse me, the three of Blake Reynolds nearly spun himself out here with the wheel spin as see the big push between Nichols and Overland as they roll through one and two. Couple of four teams trying to open up maybe a little bit of a gap to get ahead of these guys. But look at this mid-pack, they're fanning out nearly three, four wide. This is what we expect. A lot of blocking happening down the back straightaway. They're five wide for something like 30th position. The race leaders, though, single file bumper to bumper traffic. Some new faces in that. Nathan Lyon, he's under attack by the three Reynolds. They almost touched. Look at the four of Santiago Tires. He'll look to the inside, but Chris Overland's going to block that lane for the time being. Gorlinski wants to go high, and here's the dive to the bottom for Chris Overland. The 24 car in front the 24 though not going to allow the 10 or the 16 rather I should say to get away now we've got two sets of two by two and they can't get away that's the thing they're still side by side for the leaders we're wrecking in behind by the looks of it a little bit of smoke everybody fans down to the inside we're still green yeah, there's a lot of cars down onto the apron, but so far, no caution. This race stays green. I believe it was contact in the field. There was a ton of contact, and a lot of cars ended up in the fence, but we never did get a caution to flag for it. It was the 66 of Jarl Tien, who got hit sideways. He's fine. We stay green, and we fight for the race lead. So it is now Nathan Lyon, third car in line on the bottom, and, you know, for all of the chaos that the last two yellows of the incident has caused, the one constant that didn't get Get snake bitten Bobby Zelensky the 83 car has been a factor all night and he is not going anywhere he and Keegan Leahy still in the top eight on oh, the 16 nearly getting moved they went down in towards turn three there I'm pretty happy to hear the 83 is doing well my pick running strong both of your guys is, have had a little bit of problems but look at all these teams at the head of the field that are looking for their first wins in these series you have mode mode motorsports who currently leads wood brothers currently sit second Santiago Tires with Latard Esports came close to a couple wins last year as well as we're going side by side with the replay of that little half incident you saw but so many teams here up at the head of the field looking for their first official victory victory in this championship great to see as they're nearly four wide down the back again there's the replay though with Santiago Tires getting clipped he was able to hang on to it so no caution we stayed green up at the front of the field line we're three wide there's more contact Tires gets hip checked that contact coming from Leahy it'll push the four car all the way up the hill he's gonna drop way behind now the race lead as it is getting dicey once more that time by top 12 cars within one second of the race leader you mentioned about Motorsports looking for a first win the team owned by former Chicago Bears guard Kyle Long. Nichols new to that duo for this season and here's Overland out of the bottom. Chris Overland trying to get that key to victory lane for the first time in his career in the NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series on that inside. But that one constant Bobby Zelensky continues to work that outside line. The 97 of John Gorlinski looking to punch his ticket into victory lane here at Auto Club doing a fantastic job. Your top four broken away just a little bit from that fifth place driver Nathan Lyon. The Roush Fenway racing driver trying to get back up here and trying to mix it up for the lead position. And not a lot of teammate duos up here. Still got the Denny Hamlet guys of Kerwin and Leahy together. But other than that, you've got representatives from everybody. Team Dillon Esports, Clinton Boyer Racy, to Burton Clicker. But that's all for the trio of cars with Blake Reynolds, Cattell, Kerwin, and Don back. So not a lot of help, not a lot of friendly faces up front. Going to be a lot of every man for himself in the rundown to the end of this thing. And again, keep in mind, we're still a long way for the end as Nichols will go back down to the the inside of Zelensky side by side for the race lead once more as we try to see who's going to be the next major player in this one but even though you get to the race lead and you got a big target on the back bumper it's not deterring these guys Randy from not wanting to lead I'm not seeing a ton of cars saying you know what I'll just hang out in seventh or eighth for now they all want to go for it lead every single lap they can look at that blocking down the back straight away with the 77 Machina Crowder 
got Crowder getting shoved pretty much all the way down there to the inside as we're going to go right on board here with the number four of Santiago Tierez. And you're going to see here doing everything he can, trying to work his way forward. And you see those people in the background. We had a talk with Mr. Eric J. Smith at the top of the show, and you saw him in the background. Now you see Eric out on the left side of the screen here on the onboard, but he's doing everything he can, currently riding in 15th as there's two by two by two up here at the head of the field. And here's the replay of the contact that he had right there. Leahy came up and doored him pretty good. And he had to use every inch of the racetrack to hang on to that car. He was out in no man's land. He was just fighting for the race lead. Santiago right now runs in 15th position. One little bobble just like that put him nearly back through half of the field. Although he's somebody who started in 39. So making moves uh, is not a huge concern for him. Uh, but it does make his life a lot more difficult as you look at a lead pack that is about 16 cars deep still fighting for the race lead Zelensky bottom side nickels up top for the 24 and it will be Zelensky back to the lead as we cycle out of turn two look at the big swing to the inside all the way to the apron goes Jake Nichols and he wasn't the only one you saw a couple go down to the inside and try to pick up a couple of spots might have seen a couple of blocks thrown there as well down the back straightaway but Jake Nichols is going to come out with the lead and going to try to bring John Gorlinski along with him and Jeremy Allen first time we really talked about him all night long we know that he's good with this package that we have here on these uh, mile and a half two milers and here comes Jeremy Allen towards the front of the field keep an eye on him he's going to be a threat before this one is all said and done and we were talking a lot about his teammate earlier on in Christian Challenger, but Jeremy R. Allen, the new driver who returns to this series after multi-year hiatus. Look at the blocking with the 77 car. Crowder is on the apron. That's about the third time in the last couple of laps. He's tried to make a move to the bottom, and those cars have blocked him to the apron every time. Now contact with Cattell. He goes up the hill in turn four. He'll hang on, but they are really starting to fan out and really starting to push the envelope. I don't think there's any way to say it. We're going to see a caution soon with the blocking we're seeing. Jake Nichols, last trip into turn one, he really couldn't pick a line. He just kept blocking top, bottom, top, bottom, was almost following down the front straightaway. Then we saw a couple aggressive blocks there down the back straightaway for any of these guys in the mid-pack. Here it comes. There's a little bit of contact, couple cars sideways, but they save it. But this entire pack is getting ready to stack each other up. That was Bolton going up the hill and getting into the 46 machine, I believe, of Jimmy Mullis in the center of the corner. I have no clue how that was not a massive incident. There were about four cars sideways while all being side by side with one another. And I'm not sure they lifted. They're still four wide with Tian on the apron this time. They'll resolve to just two wide by the time they get down to turn one. But if this isn't flirting with fire, Tim, I don't know what is. There's a lot of moves that are being made right now that we're used to seeing with 10, 5, maybe 2 laps to go, but they still have a handful of laps to go, over 25 laps to go in this one, still a quarter of this race to go, and these drivers are positioning themselves to try to make that move and make that move quickly. Put yourself near the front of the field. Up in front, top five or so, single file, really trying to bide their time right now as John Gorlinski and the rest of the field try to uh, make their way up here in the top five, but for the most part, out back, top ten or so, they're getting two, three wide. They're getting busy. And I'm not sure how much of this is by design. I think with just so many near wrecks, a lot of the cars have dropped the back just by having to make those saves, kind of regather themselves. And I wonder if all of those near misses are going to spook them at all or if they're going to get back up to the front here and just go right at each other's throats. Zelensky, the only car on the bottom. Look at that late transition. Chris Overland came down, nearly split himself over the nose of that Jordan number 23 of Casey Kerwin. Very close call there. They hang on. We find a Nancy to partner, and we do it again. Next time by, it'll be the final quarter of this race from Fontana. This portion of tonight's broadcast brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of Edascar. Yeah, these guys are doing everything they can here to 
keep themselves clean as Bobby Zielinski still even with Jake Nichols with 23 of Kerwin is in it. One thing as well I need to think about here, Evan, is what are these guys who stayed out on the old tires? Remember, they didn't get a chance to come down pit road after their pit strategy. They're on about 9, 10 lap older tires when they stayed out at the caution. So the likes of Jake Nichols, the 16 of Chris Overland, as this run goes on, they're going to hit that plateau we saw in the first run a lot sooner than the rest of these guys that were able to come down pit road at the caution and get four uh, fresh tires. And you can see with the 77 and the 16 do it battle now that Ashton Crowder trying to carry the torch for his duo after Clampett got in that incident and dropped out of this. Let's take a look at our Coca-Cola onboard camera. It is with Casey Kerwin right now, who is third on the racetrack. He's working on the bottom. That is Zelensky in front of him. And just a sliver of the 24 is visible to the outside of Jake Nichols. He's got just as good a shot as anybody to go to victory lane in this one. Look at the draft on the straightaway. He'll look to the outside. Actually made contact a little bit. That hindered his run. And when he opened up the outside now, Crowder dives to the bottom. Ashton Crowder takes a look to the inside. Battle for position number two. In behind Bobby Zelensky as they run down the back straightaway as the Jordan number 23 of Casey Kerwin goes down to that inside. Tries to go back up to the outside line. Trying to make a move and make the move towards the front. But Bobby Zelensky holding a pretty wheel up in front. Casey Kerwin gets that run off of the outside. But there goes Ashton Crowder to the inside. And you can see the side-by-side. -side. This is a great view off of the back end of Kerwin's machine. The battling going on behind him with Nichols in the 97 machine of John Gorlinski. That car represented William Byron Esports. So a lot of those new teams to the series having a good night so far. VRS, William Byron Esports, Denny Hamlin Racing. They are all and up into the mix. There's contact for the race lead as the 83 got shoved down the hill. There was no lifting from the 20. Yeah, and of course that Jordan sponsorship, Evan, I mean, big, big, of course, deal for Denny Hamlin Racing coming in. Those guys having a big year, of course, winning the season opener. Denny just in his own right, winning the Daytona 500 uh, a couple of weeks back. And, of course, we saw Michael very, very emotional at Kobe Bryant's memorial uh, over the last day or so. And what a way it would be for them if to go from that and have uh, get that Jordan logo into potentially victory lane here at California in uh, Los Angeles. Just about an hour east or so of Los Angeles sits this racetrack. What a way to honor not only Jordan, but even uh, Mr. Kobe Bryant as well. And you can see as they go four wide that you're going to see a lot of those tributes in the Cup Series race this weekend. Ada Fontana getting used to some of these new paint schemes. One of the cool stories behind that number 23 car is that Michael Jordan himself had a say in how that race car would look. And it has come out real nice. A lot of real fresh paint schemes on track for 2020. And I've got an idea that I think these teams are going to keep coming out with more and more as the season goes on. But of course, the cars look good right now too. Him, but I mean they can look good at lap 80 it's good to get the TV time but these cars need to stay in one apiece as we need to go still 20 more laps as of this time by it has calmed down a little bit and I think those incidents actually force these drivers to get a bit of separation and through all of that Ashton Crowder is going to go to the front of the field the driver from Charlotte North Carolina driving for Burton Kligerman Esports to the top of the board but you mentioned teammates coming towards the front how about Garrett Lowe and Chris Overland? The Wood Brothers teammates are up here mixing it up in the top 10. We saw Chris Overland try that strategy. He's in seventh place right now. Garrett Lowe moving towards the front to the inside. He goes for position number four. I, I better believe that uh, John Wood and James Gunn and all those guys are up on the edge of their seat right now trying to get these Wood Brothers cars into victory lane. But uh, they've got two good horses right now in the top 10. Yeah, that 21 to machine new driver this year is uh, Garrett Lowe made the transition over to that stable. He's got Chris Overland with him. I mentioned off at the top the reason I had to pick to lose uh, to win this race. And listen, it wasn't a bad pick until it was involved in the incident that my fantasy is going to take a hit for the year is because of Michigan as well. And you want to talk about close calls. Chris Overland nearly won that race last year for the Wood Brothers. Tonight could be some redemption for him in that number 16 car. 
Yeah, it really could be. I mean, we saw him. He was very, very good at Michigan and still side by side for the race lead. They were three wide through one and two dealing with a lap car and they're going to be three wide again down the back straightaway. Kerwin, slight advantage up top. Blinsky in the middle and it's going to be Ashton Crowder on the bottom, the second Burton Kligerman Esports car. We've seen get aggressive out here in this race. Of course, it was Logan Clampett earlier. He got caught up in an incident, really no fault of his own to be honest, but the 77 Ashton's going to now carry the torch here for that team and man what a, what a way it would be for him Evan to win at Darlington last year as a rookie and come out here early and scratch a win for the 77 that'd be great for him and that organization as well as Bobby goes back to the lead he goes back to the top spot Crowder has been trying so many times to get to the inside he's been blocked countless opportunities that he was, I'm sure is getting tired with these guys up front look at Kerwin to the outside the 77 trying to follow that draft wherever he can but now with low on the top side he'll have to stick to the bottom and follow in line with the 83 machine again these drivers good on the field to go the distance a scheduled lap of 100 but we could see some overtime if necessary there he is to the inside again Ashton Kerwin Crowder trying to make the inside work. We're three wide for the race lead, but he can't clear on the inside. And now here comes Zelensky back through the middle. What a move. Crowder drove it to the inside. I'm here, boys, going for the lead position. And he battles with the 83 of Bobby Zelensky. He made his hole to the inside. And here it looked like the 23 of Casey Kerwin was going to go to the inside. John Gorlinski now going to occupy that position in that William Byron Esports number 97 as they go side by side for first, side by side for third. And they're all stacking up behind from fifth on back trying to make a move. That on board there as well was a real good illustration of how bumpy the back straightaway and down to turn number three is here in Fontana. All of these tracks of the iRacing service laser scanned to millimeter accuracy. You'll never sim race on anything more close to the real thing than you will here on iRacing. For information on how you can start your iRacing career, log on to iRacing.com for more information. Your first race ain't going to be in a series where the champion gets $100,000, but hey, these guys had to start somewhere as well as we'll take 15 laps to go. Yeah, and they're still nearly nose to nose here as they come across the stripe. Look at Casey Kerwin trying to eye up this move. Not going to go three wide, though, and I like that knowing there's about 15 laps to go here, Evan. I think in this window, don't get overly aggressive now trying to get to that race lead, trying to get to second, trying to get up, you know, you know, gain spots here. Uh, you know, pick up a spot when you can, but don't get overly dicey because any caution is going to reset that, and uh, you want to leave your tires as well. Tire conservation through these last 15 laps going to be very important. Don't want to roast them now and kill them for the last five or so lap run as Crowder able to start eking out an advantage here off of four. He is. He is getting a little bit of separation. I'm sure he wants to enjoy that clean air for as long as he can, but now you got to kind of set your sights on who's going to be the contenders and who are going to be the pretenders because not all 15 cars could be there on the last lap, so who are you most worried about? Casey Kerwin, who goes to the inside? Zelensky low. Those guys are fighters, and listen, you got 14 cars within two seconds of the race leader, Tim, but at some point, if I'm Blake Reynolds at a P8, I need to get that Coca-Cola Chevy to the top five spot. If I'm Chris Overland, I got to get back up there. You can't afford to go backwards at this point. And you have to worry about who you're dancing with right now as you're right on board with Jake Nichols in that mode motorsports number 24. If you're out front, if you're Ashton Crowder, you're not worried what Blake Reynolds is doing, even though they're, they're battling hard for that position right there. The 21 of Garrett Lowe, the 83 of Bobby Zelensky going at it. You really have to be concerned with who you're racing with right now and who's around you. Run your own race. Speaking about running your own race, here comes Casey Kerwin to the inside. He wants to run into the lead. He wants to go all the way to the front, unable to clear that Tom at the inside. So Crowder, who had made most of his moves down on the inside of the racetrack, that time defending up on the outside. We'll see if he's going to be able to maintain this or not. He still has the 23 on the bumper. You still got Lowe, Zelensky, Gorlinski, Nichols, Overland, Reynolds, a whole host of drivers. They all feel like this is their opportunity to get the race win. Crowder, though, has got the target on his bumper for the moment. He leads at lap 89. 
And Tim brings up, I think, an interesting point there, talking about the fact that Ashton Crowder has been so good on the bottom. And this is going to be interesting to watch here, Evan, because we've seen thus far today that through one and two, you can really run the top line and be strong. But at three and four, uh, it's the bottom line that's been really, really good is the 23 of uh, Casey Kerwin makes a slight mistake. That's going to give Ashton a little bit of an advantage, but they might be able to just draft right back up to him. But I'm thinking about what happens on lap number 100. Where do you set yourself up? Do you try to have the advantage off of two or do you try to take the advantage coming off of four or do you just take what you're given and roll with it we've got three one-time winners leading this race crowder low and Kerwin. all of these drivers have been victory lane one time in this edas car coca-cola i racing series it's a different story for the car who sits in the number four position bobby zelensky five-time race winner of course now all these drivers trying to pick up another one and to put it in the back pocket there's a late sweepy move by chris overland to the bottom he's not able to make that spot stick into position number seven he'll have to hold reset and try it again but i'll tell you what crowder's got some breathing room coming to 10 laps to go his advantage sits at about five car lengths one of the biggest leads, except for that green flag pit stop strategy that we saw in the cycle that we saw there, but Crowder and even now Garrett Lowe trying to pull away from Bobby Zelensky and the rest of the running order in behind. For the most part, it's got tame. It's single file, a couple of side-by-side -side battles. Battle for position number four being one of them. Casey Kerwin trying to hold off the 24. And looking back there, the 16 of Chris Overland, also there, Jake Nichols battling for that spot as they work down into corner number three. You ride on board with Jimmy Mullis now in that Coca-Cola Energy number 46 for Richmond Raceway Esports. He's trying to further his top 10 position currently running in position number nine. And the Coke Energy machine is following the Coca-Cola machine. Mullis and Reynolds back to back. Two different teams though with Team Dillard Esports and Richmond Raceway Esports. Those are the cars who are close but I think it's painstakingly just not enough. They can see the cars in the draft that are a part of the conversation. They just need a little bit extra and I'm not sure the eight laps that'll be left to go the next time by are be good enough as you see P9 with the 46 car right now. Garrett Lowe, though, has drafted up to the bumper of Ashton Crowder. The battle for the race lead is on, at least amongst a pair of two. We'll see if Zelensky can close from third. There's a lot of blocking to go on for fourth as Nichols crosses Kerwin up to the inside with those top two trying to keep it between them. Yeah, those cars right now sitting third on back. They're just in this weird place, Evan. They're just far enough back that they're really not getting much slipstream. They're still getting dirty air, though, and that's going to be making those cars not really rotate that well through the center of the corner. And, of course, on top of that, they're fighting with one another. So it's going to be a big, big ask for them to be able to slipstream up into these top two as they were actually pretty nice that time. But, of course, on top of that, Evan, we're at the window where the tires are starting to go away. So the three wide, four wide moments we were seeing through lap, the, you know, know the lap 70s lap 80s we're not going to be seeing that unless we get another late race yellow to maybe stack them up for a green white checker to the 21 big run on the 77 and they're side by side for the lead Ever say never. I'm not convinced that this one's going to be able to go the distance as scheduled until I see that white flag in the air. Garrett Lowe got the inside positioning, wasn't able to make it stick. The lap times for Bobby Zelensky in third have been about even with the cars in front of him. Even is not good enough at the disadvantage that he sits at now. You're going to need about a tenth of a second per lap just to get back and into the conversation. It is still Crowder atop Garrett Lowe. This time by, we'll see six laps to go in Fontana still the Burton Kligerman Toyota in front these top two absolutely love this battle right now they are out and away from the rest of the field and for the most part they're at your top 10 top 15 or so we got some single file racing these couple of drivers side by side picking off positions Evan late in this race that's great for the leaders they want this thing to stay green but we're not seeing that sense of urgency that we really saw off the restart you saw it there with the shot down the back straight away lots of single file racing couple of drivers trying to pick up some positions but as we come closer to five laps to go and get closer to that checkered flag, that sense of urgency ramps up. If I'm in 21st, I want 20th place. I want to pick up a couple of more positions before this thing is all said and done. 
And that's why just because nobody's racking on the camera up at the front of the field, done to me to burst safe. Here's Low again. He'll look to the inside. Now off at a turn number one and with a convincing dive. He's got it. Garrett Low clears Crowder for the race lead. The 77's going to give him a shot to the back bumper, but he can't get back around him. And how about Garrett Low, new race leader on lap number 96? That looked like some dirt track late model stuff. That was a slide job to get to the race lead. The problem is that checked up not only himself, but Ashton Crowder as well. Look at how much closer the third place running number 83 of Bobby Zelensky is. That might get him in the window to really be able to feel the positive effect of the draft. We come across start finish to take lap number 97. The 77 is going to look up the inside. Crowder wants to lead back. He is not going to commit nearly as hard, but he might just be able to get clear. Will he check up in front of the 21? Yes, he will. This is going to be another check up as they fight down the back. He tried to block to the inside, but the move was too swift from Lowe's, so he crosses over. He's now back on his door, and side by side for the race lead we are again. If they stay like this, they're just opening a window for Bobby Zelensky, who sits in third, who is not done yet. But it is Lowe with the advantage by half a car like now, 97 laps down, three more laps to go, and there's the view from third. Crowder was smart with his last move to go to the inside, down into corner number one. Had the move, had the momentum, tried to pinch off Garrett Lowe right here and try to get that momentum off of turn number two to take that lead back, but Garrett Lowe will not go away. Back to single file racing. Can Garrett Lowe get a run, set up that number 77 to Crowder and make what would be the winning move? Bobby Zelensky is closing in. This is going to be a three-car battle, I think, before this thing is all said and done. If they continue to battle as hard as they are, up in front two laps to go this time Garrett Lowe looks poised to try to make a move here he wants to make a move. He'll look to the outside. Now goes to the bottom as Crowder took away the outer line. Side by side again with Popsicle six in the air. It is low on the bottom. Crowder on the outside. And here comes Zelensky a little bit closer. I still don't think he's close enough. And it is the 77 with the lead. Second to last time down the back straightaway. Three and four, the 21 has to set up a move here, even if it's not coming into one, to just get closer, just get closer. The 83 is Zelensky. He needs to be lurking as well and find any amount of speed he can, but Bobby not getting the run he needs. Here comes the 21, though. White flag waves at start finish. Here comes the 21, just right up to the back of the 77. He doesn't want to be side by side into one and two for the final time, Evan. He wants to look up for three and four. One to go, presented by iRacing. Ashton Crowder pulls an advantage through turn number two. Garrett Lowe's going to need to find a whole lot extra. His advantage is four car lengths, three car lengths. He closes the gap just a little bit with lap traffic in front. He'll drive it in hard in turn number three, but it is not going to be enough. And for the second time, Ashton Crowder, a winner in the Enascar Coca-Cola I racing series does it tonight in Fontana. His teammate was strong at the start of the night, Logan Clampett, and Ashton Crowder comes home and picks up that win for Burton Kligerman Esports. A great team effort from start to finish. Crowder goes home with the win. And Evan, I saw that number 21 at Garrett Lowe kind of have a four wheel slide going down into corner number one on that last lap. Kind of prevented that run he got a run down into turn number three just not enough steam to make it work ashton crowder comes home with the victory and you better believe he's gonna be happy official margin of victory gonna be 0 0.128 seconds in favor of ashton crowder first win since that first career win in darlington last year but if you look at where that happened in the season if you're a stat guy ashton crowder winner of two of the last six races and a very good way for that team to kick off 2020 with Burton Kligerman having two very strong cars tonight Randy and with that 77 parking it at victory lane as you can see all these drivers coming up and congratulating him yeah, you mentioned the fact that that organization as a whole has been very, very strong today. Logan Clampett, you know, like I said earlier, I think he may have been the favorite to win as we are getting to about the halfway point of this race. But Ashton Crowder able to take it home for that organization. And we're going to see some fun burnouts, I think, here in just a moment as he comes to start finish.
He celebrates it on the front straight away. This winning moment is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official fan refreshment of eNASCAR. Ashton Crowder, Coke Series winner in Fontana. So two different race winners to kick off the season. And what a hard-fought victory for the driver who started right in the thick of things in 17th position. We talked about how this racetrack has provided many different race winners over the years, Tim. And tonight we get another. And we saw really two separate races. We saw the green flag run, the cycle of green flag pit stops couple of cautions at the end kind of changed some of those drivers near the front of the field guys like Bobby Zelensky were still up there Casey Kerwin were still up there but at the end of the day it's Ashton Crowder who takes away the checker flag what a run as we take a look at the results take a look at our full race results tonight from round number two Ashton Crowder gets the win in his Toyota powered car over top of Garrett Lowe who comes home in second. Bobby Zelensky unable to make up that distance in the end but all three manufacturers and three different teams represented inside of the top three. Jake Nichols and Chris Overland through your top five. A lot of those cars staying consistent on this type of racetrack but also just scanning through that Randy looks like ten different teams represented in tonight's top ten. Yeah, great to see that representation inside of the top 10 as we move back rail, follow the closest to making it a pair of VRS cars inside of the top 10 was Bobby Zelensky finishing third. And a couple other notable names up in here as well. One driver, I mean, Ray going from 32nd to 11, Phil Diaz 35th up in the 14th. And Jeremy Allen, he started caboose on the field 40th. He comes away with a great top 15 uh, at the end of it. And looking down at the second or the third page here, Keegan Leahy ran so strong at the start of the night, finished in 22nd. Justin Bolton was up in the top 10, finishes in 24th. Colin Keister had a strong run, so did Graham Bolin. Outside of the top 20, 26th and 27th place respectively. And last season's winner here, Eric Smith, comes home in 29th. And then continued on down to the final slide. A lot of these were fast cars early on in the evening. The likes of Chris Sherburn, who started in second position. Ryan Luza, who started in third, caught up in some of the incidents. And they do not get the results that they wanted. 33 cars at the end of the night finish on the lead lap in this one. Should also note that there were two teammates inside of the top 10 with the Wood Brothers cars. But let's talk with tonight's race winner from Fontana. It is the driver of that number 77 of Valvoline Toyota for Burton Clicker Media Sports. Ashton Crowder with his first win for 2020. Ashton, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, that uh, well, that was pretty cool, honestly. Um, Garrett, I, I told Garrett over like our drivers thing. Uh, I think it was like 10 to go. I told him like, don't make a move yet. Like, wait till five to go because I figured we'd get caught by Bobby. Um, thankfully that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, just everybody that builds these race cars honestly because like we frankly we weren't really that good last year we got a win it was mostly off a of strategy and uh just you know the cars overall were just really lacking so we spent a lot of time during the winter and um just tested our you know butts off and all that and uh it, it's obviously showing because like you know got out front we had really good speed it was a tad bit loose but overall i I think we held on like really well uh, considering where we started um, on the restart. I think uh, Garrett may have felt back a little bit more, but just uh, just everybody that builds these cars, Christian Challoner, Dave Soltman, uh, uh, Tanner Tellerico, uh, Justin Listenby, just everybody, they're doing an amazing job and I'm just so happy to get them all in. And this one didn't have the fireworks at the end that we saw last year. That to the benefit of the driver of the 77 machine, Ashton Crowder, your winner in Fontana. We'll pass things on down along the line. Tim Terry chatted with our second place finisher in this one. That goes to the 21 of Garrett Lowe. And Garrett Lowe looked like he was going to have a run at the end of it, but Garrett coming down on that white flag lap down into turn number one. Looked like you had a little slide. Did that prevent you from really making that head of steam in turn number four to take away that, that victory? Talk us through those last couple laps. Yeah, um, had a fantastic car tonight, man. I, I can't thank everybody at Woodbows Racing, uh, Five Star, yeah, Five Star Racing, uh, and everybody over at the team for just man, it's a fantastic car. Uh, just couldn't quite get there at the end. Just kind of got behind him and almost pushed him away more than uh, more than catching him there with the draft. So uh, uh, it's something to look forward to the rest of the season. I think we uh, showed a good, good standing for the rest of the season. I think, and hopefully we'll carry this momentum. Uh, good finish. So we'll go from there. You mentioned momentum, two Wood Brothers racing drivers in the top five. How huge is that for your team? 
Oh, it's it's just huge. I mean, we already had the little bet going on with Richmond Raceway uh, this week. Um, those you hadn't seen that on Twitter, go check that out. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a bet between us of who had the higher higher average finish, um, had to wear the other's team gear. So we'll see how that turns out this week. So tune in later this week on the Wood Brothers accounts uh, or the Richmond accounts as well, and you'll you'll see some cool content there. Well, it looks like the Wood Brothers are going to come out on top of that. That's Garrett Lowe finishing in position number two. And Randy, another constant near the front of the field. Uh, Bobby Zielinski finished in position number three, but uh, great run for him too. Yeah, Bobby Zielinski, he was absolutely fantastic out there. I know that uh, the bridesmaid is typically who finishes second every time, uh, Tim, but that's three, uh, excuse me, two races back-to-back -back for Bobby finishing third. I'm sure that's a little bit uh, disappointing for him as we actually have the 24 of Jake Nichols on hand. Jake, big run for you. You go from 33rd up to 4th. How is that number 24 mode media house car? That thing looked hooked up, hooked up, excuse me, near the last uh, 20 or so laps. Yeah, it was for sure. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't too sure how that last run was going to go there. We had, uh, me and Chris Overland there were working together all race, and uh, we had uh, like four lap older tires and everyone, so... I knew we'd be good short run, but I wasn't so sure mid to long run. And since we went green the whole time there, I was just holding on. And man, we had a great car, the Mode Motorsports and Mode Media House, uh, Ford Mustang, almost at Fusion, uh, was really good. Uh, the Slipping Old Boys and ERG guys uh, really did their part, especially with Mode and all their support. And man, I can't believe it. Uh, starting that far back, it's it's so hard to make passes and go from the back to the front. And so we had to play a different strat. And uh, we just tried to go with one pit stop there and got a caution at the perfect time. And man, our car was good. Uh, I'm glad we had some good teamwork. I got to work uh, run with Bobby there. Uh, battling for the lead for 10 to 15 laps was a, uh, an absolute blast. I uh, can't thank these guys enough for a great race there. Well, there he was. Jake Nichols comes home in fourth tonight and standing by with the third place finisher. We'll go back over to Tim Terry to talk to my pick, Bobby Zielinski. And Bobby Zielinski comes home with position number three. It's a great start to the season, Bobby. Another podium finish. I know you wanted a couple of positions more, but walk us through those last couple laps trying to get up there to the top two. Uh, my tires were, were done. Um, I, uh, I really, really used them up trying to keep the lead, which was kind of worth it because, yeah, I still got third, and this is still earlier in the season. You, you need to get points. But, uh, damn, this is so close to that win again. I was just I was plowing tight. Um, what are you gonna do? But uh, I always show up for California, so gotta be happy about that. A great finish for you, but we have to ask you, where's the wheel? Didn't you race at the wheel tonight? It's over there, this is my desk. It's way better for camera. I have lights now, which I always had, but uh, I, I, I remembered to turn them on this time because, uh, you know, gotta look a little better on the interview here. But uh, yeah, wheels over there, the rig, so. Too early to talk about points, but obviously two great finishes momentum-wise heading forward here. we got an extra week before we head into Homestead Miami Speedway. What's the thought process now after two races? Uh, so it's, a, it's weird going to Homestead already, but uh, I don't know. This this is great for, for the points, right? Two-thirds in both uh, with the bonus point and lap lead in both. Uh, but, you know, you, you want to... You wanna, try to win being that close both times but you know hats off to to garrett and ashton i i don't know i i think it was more down the driver with me tearing up my right front and not being able to challenge those two uh but you know just got to thank everyone at team vrs coanda and and uh you know keegan and, and chris of course because this definitely wouldn't happen without them um and yeah it sucks that they they got caught up in a mess today because they they deserve to be up you know right with me so um we're going homestead but We'll make it work, and uh, I'm sure we'll have a good car, and, you know, let it rip. And that's Bobby Zielinski having a great run here, and Evan, the Coca-Cola move of the race we're seeing here now, uh, a great move at the end of this race, too, for Ashton Crowder to take the win. In the past for the race lead, unlike last year, and the win did not come at a final lap, but it came with a couple laps still to go in this one, with Crowder making the pass 
on lap number 98 as they tried to make that move and you can see clearing down on the inside he slides up in front Garrett went for the crossover he did establish inside positioning but he was never able to get all the way back around that number 77 Toyota so that move on lap number 97 threw it to 98 he got awfully close right there wasn't able to do so that pass with three laps to go is our Coca-Cola move of the race and that number 7 77 sheet of Ashton Crowder used it to power himself to his first victory of 2020 and it was just alluded to there talking with Bobby but we go racing at Homestead Randy in three weeks time it has been the season finale every single year since 2011 but this time it's round three and it'll be in three Tuesdays time yeah, a bit of a Tim fact for you already. First time this is going to be the third race on the calendar in this championship. And it's really weird, you know, to have the first two races both down in Florida. I love Homestead, though. I've always liked Homestead. Uh, it's very unique. I love the variable banking there. It just seems to be a track that generates good racing. So I'm very happy to be going there earlier in the season, and uh, it's going to be a great show. And Tim, we talk about how unique it is, but it is still an intermediate race track. And as you heard, just heard the interview there with the race winner Ashton Crowder, even some of the names and teams that haven't swapped, they put in a ton of work over the offseason. That'll be our first good look as who's got what on the one-and-a-half-mile racetrack, which do make up a bulk of the calendar. Yeah, they're going to have a couple of weeks to really set themselves up for the Homestead Miami Speedway. But we talked about this being the start to the season. Evan, we're really going to start to get into the meat and potatoes as we move forward into Homestead Miami and the rest of this eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series season. It's three weeks off until the next time out, but that's it for us here tonight from Fontana. We'll catch you on Tuesday, March the 17th for round number three for the virtual Homestead Miami Speedway. That race and to every race of the 2020 eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series can be found right here on the iRacing Esports Network. Until next time, good night from SoCal, where Ashton Crowder is in victory lane.